الكرام سيقوم الان مجموعه من ضيوف معرض الكتاب من مدينه ادمبرا بالتحدث عن مدينه ادمبرا وعن كونها عاصمه للثقافه وعن مهرجان ادمبرا للادب يمكنكم الانضمام الينا والاستماع اليهم في المركز الاجتماعي بجانب منصه اتصالات Uh, my name is Anna Berkey and I am here from Edinburgh in Scotland. Uh, I have brought a whole team of writers and festival professionals with me to come and learn about Sharjah, to learn about the writing and literature of the Middle East, and to share a little bit with you about what we do in Scotland to do with writing. Edinburgh, the capital of Scotland, is the world's very first UNESCO city of literature. And that's because it's a city that has been built on books and writing throughout the centuries. So anybody here, oh, anyone here read Treasure Island? No? Do yes? Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, maybe, yeah? Both written by Robert Louis Stevenson, who was born and lived in Edinburgh. What about the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes? Anyone familiar? Yes. Yeah, again, Arthur Conan Doyle. He's an Edinburgh lad as Who's well. That? Who's that? Uh, who's Conan Doyle? That's not allowed as a question. Uh, Arthur Conan Doyle also wrote The Lost World. If he hadn't written The Lost World, we would never have had the film Jurassic Park. Uh, so Edinburgh has been home to a great many writers, including Sir Walter Scott, Robert Louis Stevenson, uh, also female writers, the world's first uh, female novelist to make a living from her writing, Margaret Olivant, she's from Edinburgh as well. Um, and also Dame Muriel Spark, who wrote The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie, a very good film with Dame Maggie Smith in it as well. So Edinburgh is full of writers from the past, but also at the moment as well. We have the world's biggest book festival, so that's just the programme of public events, none of this beautiful um, trade fair that's going on. Um, and we get about 800 authors to come across two weeks. We have a storytelling centre, we have a poetry library, we have uh, a National Library of Scotland that collects one copy of everything published in the UK. And that doesn't matter whether it's digital or in the print. They both count the same for us. So we've got about 15 million items and growing by about 300,000 a year. So it's a busy library. We actually have 140 libraries in Edinburgh, but we only have less than half a million people. So that's a lot of libraries per person. So I've talked enough. Um, you can come and chat to me afterwards if you want to learn a little bit more about literary Edinburgh or you want to tell me about the writing in the Middle East. But for now, I'm going to hand over to some of my colleagues who'll tell you a little bit more about the cool and quirky festivals that they're involved with and the writing that they work on. So first up, Sarah Grady. That's loud enough. Um, my name is Sarah Grady. I worked in Edinburgh for a long time, though I'm from America originally. I moved to Edinburgh because it's a city of festivals. There are hundreds of festivals and thousands of people who visit every year to be a part of the culture there. And one of those biggest festivals, one of the biggest book festivals in the world, Anna said, is the Book Festival. And hundreds of thousands of people come to Edinburgh from all over the world to hear hundreds of writers. They come from every continent, from countries all over the world. We've had writers from this part of the world, we've had writers from India, from Australia, from Eastern Europe, from nearer to home in the UK. We feel very strongly that Edinburgh as a center of literature is to represent all kinds of voices and dialogue between all different types of writers. So we're very keen that writers from all over can come visit us. So please do come tell me if you know of any writers in the region that we should be reading or know about. My job there was to be the director of the children's program. So I ran events for everyone from tiny babies up through teenagers. Hundreds of events and thousands of children would come from all over the UK to visit. So I got to do wonderful things like, who here knows of Harry Potter? Harry Potter is pretty famous. Harry Potter's writer lives in Edinburgh. She actually lives up the road from me. So she's one of the real landmarks of Edinburgh's literary scene and tradition of having children's writing be an important part of what we do. So I would run workshops, activities, free seminars, writers' events, talks like we're here on at the festival for all different ages and all different people. And now I work at a lot of other festivals helping to support writers and authors and children and families talk to each other and meet each other so that the writer can meet their audience and the children can meet their heroes. But that's enough from me for today. I'm going to hand you over to Peggy, who also works at Edinburgh with us. Hello, everyone. It's very, very nice to be in charge. So thank you for having us all um, at this fabulous book fair. 
My name is um, Peggy Hughes and I am um, involved with the Scottish Poetry Library which is a library with 40,000 different kinds of, you know, so we've got books, DVDs, CDs, all sorts of poetry for all ages. So if you want to come and talk to me about poetry, please do. Um, I also um, represent the City of Literature, which Anna spoke about. So these are free, so please do take them. You can find out more about our literary community, and they're just behind the corner there. They've got a nice map and pictures and things. Um, otherwise, I'm also involved with festivals and run and direct a little book festival called the Westport Book Festival, which is much tinier than this and the book festival in Edinburgh. And I edit a magazine. So if any of those things interest you and you want to come and have a chat, um, please do. I'd love to speak to you. And um, I'll hand over to Hannah McGill. Thank you, Peggy. Breathe too hard. Hello, everybody. Um, and I'm also very grateful and happy to be here in Sharjah. Um, it's been a wonderful experience. My name is Hannah McGill, and I am primarily a writer in various disciplines, a film critic, a literary critic, and a writer of fiction, um, drama, and prose. Um, I've also, like almost all of us, um, been involved in Edinburgh's festival scene. You won't meet many people working in the arts in Scotland who haven't been involved in the Edinburgh festivals. And I spent nine years as a programmer and four years as artistic director for the Edinburgh International Film Festival. So film is also one of my passions, film criticism and film writing. Um, so I'm very glad to be here. And if anyone wants to talk to me about writing in Britain, journalism or fiction, then I'd be very happy to meet you. And I'm going to introduce you now to a novelist, short story writer and a great photographer who took the pictures that we're showing you here of Scotland. This is Sophie Cook. Hi there. Um, I'm just going to chat about um, these photographs this evening. Hang on. Oh, I need to go back here. Sorry, I have to stand back here so I can reach the keyboard. And please excuse me, I'm not very good with the technology, so I might just skip through them a bit. But um, this photograph is of Cave Ness on the northeast coast of Scotland, and this was a landscape uh, made very famous in the novel, novels of Neil Gunn. He wrote a wonderful book called The Silver Darlings, which is um, very much about the dignity of owning your own fishing boat and being able to catch your own fish. It's a really beautiful book. This is a church window on Collinsay. Collinsay is an island um, in the Inner Hebrides. It's very, very, very beautiful. Um, and the landscape you can see reflected in the window is the sea outside. Um, like a lot of people in Scotland, a lot of, a lot of the islanders from Collinsay had to leave their homes um, because they couldn't afford to stay there. They didn't have enough, enough money, so they had to go and look elsewhere for work. They went to America, mainly. This is, oh, thank you. This is a beach in Cape Ness. Um, it's called Berrydale. There's some ruined fishermen's cottages out of shot there that you can't see. No one lives there anymore. Um, again, they, they couldn't afford to stay. It was very, very sad. And that's just a, a burnt piece of wood that I thought looked nice and sculptural. And this is the same beach. That's Berrydale. And in the foreground, that's actually rock. It's just been worn down so much by the water. And um, that's uh, Badby on, um, that's in Cape Ness as well. This is a place to which a lot of the crofters were moved. They were moved off the land that was rich and fertile and they were taken to the edges of the cliffs. You can see how steep and high those cliffs are and they had to live there. It was so windy that they actually had to tie their children to rocks to stop them from blowing off the cliffs. They had very little means of, of production there. They had to go out on fishing boats. It was very dangerous work, but they had no choice because they were poor. This is a road on, from Collinsay to Oranzay. It's a tidal road, so you can actually only cross over there at low tide. When it's low tide, you can get across. Um, and Oranzay is a beautiful island. It's got a ruined monastery on it. It's a very holy place, um, and it's a beautiful walk. It's a really special place to me. This is 
Hollandsey House Gardens. They're very overgrown, but still, still very beautiful, I think. This is one of the ruined crofts in Cape Ness that people had to leave. So that's, that's my photographs. Thank you very much. So that's it formally from us here in Edinburgh, but we're around so if you do want to come and talk to us or if there are any writers out there that want to, we'd love to meet you. Um, and thank you very much.